Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be going inside the JG Aurora. So a number of viewers have sent me emails about a video put out by Angus over at Maker's Muse about his JG Aurora uh, and the fact he was shocked by it. So I want to delve into this in general uh, because I don't think this is a JG Aurora issue. I think this is a general 3D printing issue and I think worth bringing it up. So I want to talk about how this could happen, how this could happen to you, and how this could happen on basically any type of 3D printer. So this is just general 3D printer safety, and I'm going to use the JG Aurora as the example since Angus brought this up. So what we have, kind of long story short here, is we have mains power, and again in the United States here we have 110, where Angus has 220. Uh, but we have mains power coming into this connector here from the power line. Uh, we have a switch over here and we have the power supply. This area right here is the, this is my other probe falls, is the limit to where we have mains voltage. So basically what we have, this is the neutral line, this is the ground line, and this is the hot line. So this is the line that can create uh, problems. Now what we have is it going from this plug uh, into this switch, from this switch into this power supply. So if I take uh, and I set my meter uh, over here for, let's go back to AC volts. So we'll set it for 200 AC volts. And if I put it on this, on my ground, and I hit touch my load, as you can see here, I have nothing. If I energize the unit, and again, I know what I'm doing. Safety needs to be exercised here. Don't do this at home, kids. And I put my meter on here we see I've got about 120 volts on this. I de-energize the unit and power is down and as you can see I have zero. So also as I go back, so I have it on the ground, so I'm touching the switch over here, I'm touching the plug, all nothing. So what happens in this wire is, is actually even right here, this is all plastic coated, plastic coated. I got the one wire and then I got the switch here. So somewhere in this wire scenario it has to be shorting out. Now you notice that this wire is kind of bunched up against here touching the case and uh, so you know one of the potential issues and this runs true on any 3D printer is maybe in transit this would have rubbed through and, and maybe touching this power supply. But what I want to do is delve into this a little bit deeper in general because one of the things I, I did notice in opening this up and this goes for all 3D printers, not just the JG Aurora, but uh, I've noticed this in all my 3D printers. First, I want to turn this to 200. Is if I take and I look at this, if I have my ground, this is my earth ground. So this yellow wire here goes to the earth ground of my home. And then if I look at this case, as you see, I've got uh, less than an ohm. So basically a dead short between here and here, which is good because what happens is something shorts out inside this case with mains voltage it's going to come in contact with this it's going to go to ground and it's going to pop my circuit breaker which is good now one of the things that Angus brought up is he did not have a good earth and ground or ground his home I, I didn't quite understand if it was the fact the power strip or what the whole deal was there but this is a very important thing number one rule always have a good earth and ground for any type of machinery such as this. This is key. Uh, because one of the other big issues, and I think he missed the PSA announcement uh, or the bigger PSA value, what he's trying to say is, uh, especially here in the United States, and I think it's going to probably hold true in Europe, what they did in the olden days was to do the electrical ground or when they came back through and retrofitted for the ground because in older homes here in the United States that did not have ground plugs. I can't remember when they started, if it was late 60s, early 70s. Uh, but th what they would do is they would take the ground, attach it to a water pipe, and then that water pipe, because it ran into the ground, acted as a ground rod. The problem is, as time went on, they made plumbing changes. Uh, plastic pipe has become very popular here in the United States. And so if there's a plumbing problem or plumbing changes, a lot of times the plumber would come in at the plastic pipe that would negate the ground and so the house would no longer have a ground although people would think it did and then what would happen is if something like this leaked back into the home's ground 
it caused an electrical shock. So, so just as you saw in Angus's video, and I have a link below if you saw it, it's definitely worth watching because if I have a bad ground and say this printer shorts out, it's going to energize my CR10 next to it. It's going to energize my Tron XE. It's going to energize something in the bathroom. And when my wife or kids touch it, you know, and it, it, they're going to be shocked or potentially electrocuted. This is a huge risk. Uh, I did a video on this for the laser cutter because the laser cutter actually depends upon, because of its high voltage power supply, on having an adequate ground. And a lot of people bleed the laser's ground into their home electrical system, which is just bad. And, and so this is the huge importance of having a good ground in your home. The second thing is, if like in Angus's case, you are shocked by something, unplug it immediately. Do not let it run, because here's the case. So maybe this wire here, uh, which is energized, you know, maybe I do have a bad ground. This rubs off here. This is going to create a short. This could create heat. This could become a fire hazard. So uh, again, uh, don't let this thing run. I don't care what you're printing, what you're doing. If you're shocked by something in your shop, shut everything down until you sort it out. Your life is not worth printing something or making something. So big tip there. Um, the other piece I want to talk about here too, and, I've, and, and I haven't really, this hasn't come to my attention in the past, although it should have, is one of the things that this printer, as well as all my other 3D printers lack, is some sort of strap going from ground to the metal case. Now, what happens if, if I go back, so I'm on ohms over here, so if I go back and I touch my ground here, and I touch this bare screw over here, what happens is you'll notice I've got, uh, you know, probably 30s to 20s in, in ohms. Now, this isn't very good. I really would like to see here uh, no more than 6 ohms, maybe 8 ohms tops. Because what's going to happen is electri electricity is going to follow the path of re least resistance. So if this becomes a short and my ground path is, say, 80 ohms and I'm 8 ohms, guess which one it's going to take? It's going to take the path of greater resistance. Now, uh, granted, a lot of you roll your eyes out there and say, all right, Joe, you know, 50, you know, sub 100, you know, that's pretty good. Um, you know, use a human, you know, bag of, you know, what electrolytes are probably going to be a higher ground ratio than this. And you're probably right, but again, safety, safety, safety first when dealing with electricity like this. And this is where I'd like to keep it, the, you know, is, is uh, you know, low as possible. So one of the things, and again, I've noticed this on the Wanhao in, in my CR10, uh, again, the configuration is very much like this. It depends upon the me mechanical connection of this case to this uh, powder coated metal case to create the ground. Now, one of the things, if I go back, is, is I think I showed already, if I touch the case, I've got almost a dead short, you know, almost no resistance, very, very little resistance. So I've got 0.3 ohms there. I've got, you know, what is this? You know, somewhere around 60, somewhere, you know, kind of varies uh, here. But this is because the powder coating is acting as a bit of an insulator. I don't have uh, a very good connection between mechanically between this case and the case of this uh, uh, printer. Now, one of the things, when Angus touched this and he received a shock, uh, more than likely the reason it didn't knock him on his keister, especially with the 220, is the fact that this powder coating is acting as a bit of insulation because if I take and I touch my ground again, and now I'm touching my case, you see I'm not getting anything. The powder coating is actually, in this case, acting as an insulator because there's not enough voltage in this meter to make it jump that bridge. Now, the more um, voltage we apply, the greater that the electricity will want to jump or extend itself to a ground. You know, because uh, voltage is a measure of electromotive force. And so, again, as we up the voltage, the likelihood of getting some sort of shock. Now, this probably attenuated the shock, but nevertheless, a very serious issue. 
So again, I kind of want to share how all this works, why it's potential, what to look for. And again, if you're not familiar with working with mains level voltages, don't do it until you, you understand it, you have the proper training experience to do this. Because again, this can be fatal. Uh, I've worked with this for, you know, 30 some years now. So again, I'm taking safety precautions and working with this energized. Always, if you open up the case to your printer or any other device, remove the power first. I'm simply allowing it to be energized here because uh, the issue at hand, and I want to demonstrate the fact that, you know, how all this works. Because again, it's only this little area right here which is really going to be in question or could cause a problem. And actually, it really comes down to this connector, this wire, this switch, and this wire to really be the problem because once it gets inside here it's really enclosed inside the power supply now if Angus would have had a proper ground it would have popped the circuit breaker he would have knew he had a problem and could take a look now the other thing I want to talk about is using residential power strips to power 3d printers or other tools don't do it do not do it it is a risk they're really not designed for this type of load now can they do it yes um, if you if you feel compelled to use a power strip use a commercial industrial quality one that's designed to handle the load of something like this you know because again power strips aren't really intended to run a 3d printer for 24 hours or 72 hours or some of the crazy stuff we do with this now I typically use dedicated circuits in my home now again I have a lot of printers I use all 20 amp circuits and I, I try to avoid uh, any type of power strip or distribution outside of, you know, just right out of the gang box. Uh, the other thing is, if I have to use an extension cord, which I do use some, I use a commercial or industrial grade extension cord that's rated to handle the load I'm putting on it. I'm not using some sort of cheap extension cord I'm getting from Walmart um, to power these printers. Again, safety, safety first, because these are drawing a lot of power for what they are. You have a heated bed, you have a hot end, you have electronics, you have motors, um, and you have this for a sustained period of time. So I can't stress safety enough. So anyways, hopefully I've demystified a little bit about what's in here. I've talked about some safety stuff. I'll have some links and more information in the comments below. Uh, also, uh, you know, links to a home ground tester and, and other things. Uh, so be aware. Also, I'd like to hear from those in the community that are maybe more astute or certified electricians what you think about a grounding strap here because this is the one big thing I noticed that there's no ancillary grounding strap because even on you for example your home outlet or your light switch uh, it, it has a ground strap on it and I would think that there should be a ground strap uh, from here running to the actual physical case to a bare metal piece on the physical case which has been taped off not powder coated and so you got a solid uh, ground to this case you know because the the other piece especially this bottom piece is the biggest risk because this is where it's really going to touch but again the whole thing is really dependent upon its mechanical connections to transfer that ground and also I want to point out you know my wand house the same way my, my CR10 same way anything that houses this this in a metal case uh, even my Tron XE which doesn't have a metal case but the power supply is attached to the physical metal uh, uh, you know chassis should have some sort of ground strap is my opinion to this just to ensure we have a connection to the metal case where I can touch it to ground the other thing is don't use any two prong plugs unless it's a double insulated uh, device and, and so most of those are clear uh, I think there's a C rating in the uh, in Europe there's the obviously UL listings here for that uh, but, you know, as Angus brings up, and I've also mentioned this in a prior build video for the tarantula, it came with a two-prong uh, uh, plug where I would just simply connect to neutral and load here. Uh, and and that's, not, that's not acceptable. If you have a 3D printer that's not double isolated, um, then you need to have three prongs. A lot of times we see double isolation is, is you know, with the mono price or where we have wall warts that are powering them. But if you have something like this, you need to have a ground. So anyways, be safe out there. Always remember safety first. If you get an electrical shock, unplug it till you determine what the problem is. Uh, avoid, you know, residential, uh, you know, power strips and splitters. 
um, ensuring that if you're using um, extension cords, they're rated for the load you're handling them. And, and don't use long extension cords. That's bad, bad, bad. Because I think another thing that Angus brings up in his video, which is good, he's running an extension cord all the way across the shop. Now, I don't know how big a shop is, but you know, if I'm running more than maybe 10 feet of length um, from my actual plug, um, I, I don't like that. So, and again, this load might not be high enough. Inductive loads, if you run a long extension cord, you can have problems. I like to err on the side of safety, and so I like to keep my extension cords no more than a roughly about 10 feet from the outlet to my device. So, anyways, swag shop up there. Comments below as always, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Big thumbs up. See you guys later. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.